What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode here at Kibbe Tech. Come see what we got going on this week. Damn it! <laughs> right in the dick! <laughs> Alright, over here in the machine shop, we got those uh, trailing arms we showed you last week. They're all wrapped up. So we got a pair of them done here. And this is the only two we're making is this style. Um, kind of a one-off thing for a project we're working on that we'll, we'll show you later. We can't really show you too much of that project right now, but uh, yeah, here's the trailing arms we did for it. It's a one-off length compared to what we usually make. Uh, sway bar location, coilover, bypass, limit strap, which actually this one has the tab in it. So we machine this tab to drop in. And then put two bolts in here. And you attach your limit strap to there. So pretty cool set. Uh, a little different, you know, with the added uh, features here more than what we usually do. We run our limit straps off the housing and uh, we run our sway bar off the housing as well. So a little more detail in these, a little more pocketing, but uh, ended up pretty lightweight and uh, super strong. We left the bottoms and the tops pretty flat on them. And on the bottom of this one, we will actually, we're gonna drill and tap a bunch of spots and run a like a hard plastic skid plate or something on them to keep them from getting banged up. Cause these are going on something that We'll be going in the rocks, so that's a little hint there of what they're for. But uh, yeah, moving right along, running more misalignments, running another batch of our top caps for our uniball upper arms. Hi, Luke. VF4s running our uh, TRX rear trailing arms right now. So these are uh, direct replacement for your uh, Ram TRX. So this is the first half done. The second half will flip it, cut the back, and then it's all done from there. But um, pretty cool. This is like our probably our fourth run of these. We've actually built and sold a lot of these so far. So pretty cool to see these popping up in a lot of trucks from you know all over, coast to coast. So pretty popular new product there. Goes perfect with our TRX upper arms, which we just finished a batch of those last week. And then over here, we're doing another run of our Colorado ZR2 billet upper A-arms. Uh, before we machined them on the VF4, but now with the five axis, we could actually get them done a lot uh, more efficiently because we used to have about seven setups to do them on this machine. And now over here on the UMC, we're able to do the ZR2 arm in two setups instead of seven. So saves us a bunch of time probably total machine time about two hours to complete one upper arm completely all the way through so you know 60 of those going through right now but yeah just trying to keep the machines running and we are looking for someone for a second shift because Luke starts at about 7 30 in the morning and leaves around 3 30 so we're looking for someone to come in around three o'clock and work until, you know, 10 or 11 or something like that. So yeah, lots of parts to the machine. All right, so uh, back over here on Dan's pre-runner, we got the uh, rear portion of the exhaust back in. So you can see it's all done from here all the way back. You see the bitchin' X-pipe right there, and then it kicks up out the top panels in the back. And uh, I really wanted to get that done before we built the floor, so then we could just, we could build the exhaust, you know, just like this without having to do it from underneath and, you know, build it on our backs. It's a lot easier this way. And another thing that's special about this truck, you see how tall the frame is. So this is a 2001 to 2010 Chevy 2500 HD frame which is a lot taller than like say like a 1500 chassis so with that the frame hangs out the bottom of the cab a lot and we didn't want that so we actually body dropped the cab 
on the frame. So the cab is about three inches, four inches lower from the bottom of the frame to the bottom of the rocker here than it would be factory because we didn't want to see a bunch of frames sticking out and it doesn't need to be that tall. We don't need all that room. So we sucked it down a little bit to uh, get everything exactly where we wanted it. And with that, we also moved the cab backwards um, to go with the new Fiberworks front clip. So the front clip is designed for six inches forward wheelbase. And so we designed our lower A-arm cross members to get us about, I think it was three and three quarter forward. So we moved the cab backwards two and a quarter to get our total six inch spread that we needed to get the fenders to line up with the front tires. And the front cross members you see there, we took our cross members from the 2007 to 18 Chevy 1500 truck and we adapted those to fit to the 01 to 10 chassis. So instead of making a one-off two-wheel drive J-arm kit for this truck, we took existing parts that we already made for that truck and adapted them to this chassis. So all we did one-off was the cross members. Everything else is exactly the same A-arm spindles and J-arms as the other truck over there. So we try to do that a lot to where, we, so where we're not designing one-off parts for every single truck. Though each truck will get a lot of one-off parts as it is, but parts like you know billet J arms and stuff like that, we don't want to program and machine 10 different arms for 10 different trucks. We, we try to utilize and share parts along the builds to make our lives easier for manufacturing. So like when we made those, AR, those J arms, you know, we machined three sets of them, and that was one for this truck, one for that truck, and then a spare set. So we'll try to plan ahead like that, make spare sets when we can. Because while we're set up running the part, that's when it makes the most sense to, to jump up on production a little bit. But uh, yeah, Chase is working on the front JR mounts right now. He's got the one side pretty much done. Got everything cleared from metal to metal maxing out the lower uniball and if it cycles the same as the other truck over there we'll be bumped and strapped right at about 20 21 inches of travel and uh, this is also running the same exact swing set steering as the other truck as well so it's all the same steering parts and a arms as well so that's another thing we didn't have to design and make a bunch of different parts for so it's nice just to use the same same steering parts as the other truck and then uh Moving along back here, see the bitchin' X-pipe kind of meets in the middle there and then kicks over. And we, we ran it down and then back up so we get a bunch of room for our transmission cooler. So we actually built that with the transmission cooler in it and we kept a bunch of space around the exhaust uh, to like the fans because we don't want the exhaust getting close to the cooler to transfer heat, or heat soak anything. And uh, that's why we added the mesh panels there to help the heat get out. And then we're also adding a dry sump tank in the middle, just like on the other truck. So we got another dry sump tank for this one. And then we're adding the dry sump to the motor as well. And then we'll put the oil coolers in the back, the same as we're doing on the other truck. Also, you'll see here this difference in the frame. Uh, so this is actually chromoly from here, you know, from here back. So the only stock part of the frame is from here forward to the front of the frame where we chopped it off. So we actually made this adapter for an 11 and 19 Chevy 2500 to run our, our uh, boxed rear frame rails. And that actually worked out on this truck, so we used that on this truck to adapt our uh, existing frame rails to this chassis. But uh, this thing kind of snowballed kind of quick, and like I said before, it should have just been a tube chassis center mount truck from the get-go. But uh, regardless, it'll still be a really fun truck, and he's already talking about a 6100, so this will be a nice pre-runner for the race truck. So on the back here on Dan's truck, you see a bunch of aluminum panels done. And uh, I'm very particular about how I like my aluminum panels. I don't like bead rolls too close to the edge. You know, then they end up going through your button. I don't like the bead roll facing in. So I like to step the center of the panels out. And I don't like keeping them out here and then doing a bunch of jogs around the buttons and having a bunch of bubbles and shapes everywhere. If you notice, it's pretty much four inches all the way around the perimeter. We get a little tighter here because of the space that we had. So it goes to about three inches here, then it goes back to four all the way around just to give it a nice clean look. Because I don't want to like overdo the panels to where the truck's just all about aluminum panels. You know, I want everything to flow 
seamlessly from front to back. So I, you know, like look at the frame, the stock frame we welded, all the factory holes shut, blended the frame. So it's just one seamless, you know, frame rail that's pretty much airtight. Um, and like same with the mesh, just, you know, nice clean mesh panel that is one inch on the perimeter of this bend and that bead roll and this bead roll and this bend. So if you notice, it's one inch everywhere. So it's not, you know, it doesn't look off anywhere. And that allows some of the heat to come out from the exhaust and the heat that's blowing off the oil cooler pointing down. And then if you look here on the front of the fuel cell, there's another panel and that keeps all the hot air from just going and cooking the, the fuel cell, uh, the actual fuel cell can. So that'll actually, uh, that hot air will heat up that fuel tank and then you'll start getting, you know, cavitation and get air bubbles in the fuel, which will happen if you don't do something like that. And then a little extra protection on this corner. This is eighth inch right here, wrapped around the corner. So keep that tube from getting beat up, keep the bottom of that panel from getting beat up. And then there's a full length eighth inch panel on the whole bottom of the bottom of the fuel cell cradle to keep that from uh, getting beat up. So all these panels serve a purpose, you know, like, yeah, you can build a truck without panels, but you know, if you didn't have panels here, your fuel cell cam would get beat up. And this panel is a lot cheaper than replacing your fuel cell can. So these actually do all serve a purpose, you know, keeps rocks from flying up through into the coolers, keeps rocks from blowing your back window out. So all these panels, you know, they all serve a purpose. And it just, when it's all done and they're powder coated, you know, it just looks really nice. And you notice this top panel is one big piece. A lot of the other trucks, you know, a little different the way the layout is. But this truck, since the shock mounts are so far in, we didn't have to do any structure here for the shock mount. You know, like the black truck has the billet mount here for the shock mount. So this one's just pretty much wide open. And then I uh, decided to go with the miter on the back of the cab here. So I haven't done a miter down bar in, I don't know, probably 10 years. But uh, I figured since the whole back of this truck has zero bends on any of the tubes, uh, we would keep that theme going and just miter this so everything, you know, flows nicely from front to back. And then you notice it's got our billet fuel cell hold downs on the top middle and in the rear corners. So we actually took these from the Tundra because he's doing the uh, double dry brake fuel cell now. So these mounts won't work with that fuel cell. So perfect time to take them off of that and use them on this truck. And another cool thing, if you look in here, it's got our spare tire. Uh, hook, uh, weld on hook point right there. So I'll go grab a strap and show you that. There you go. One hand operation right there. Pretty cool setup. Getting it off a little harder. You have to use both hands, but you know, most people just weld like a loop or something on, or they just, you know, something else to get their strap. Uh, caught myself there. To get their strap on. Did he say strap in or strap off? <laughs> but uh, see how easy this is? You drop this in, give it a push, and then it hooks right onto that stainless uh, receiver there. So they are machined out of stainless, so if you paint or powder the chassis, and you, know, you scratch this thing going on and off, it's not gonna rust. And then it's just a clean solution for uh, mounting your spare tires. So you get one on this side, you'll have one there. And then we have another one that bolts bolts into the center on the billet mount right there. And then you get yourself a, a nice Y-strap uh, spare tire tie-down setup. And I've seen people take these and weld them on their rear end housings or their A-arms or even their trailers for, uh, for holding their cars down. So pretty uh, versatile mount right there. Um, yeah, just something I came up with one day and then we started making them. So, and then we got our own straps getting made right now too so have our own straps and hook points available very soon say hi to the camera hey introduce yourself uh, my name is Ian. I run Triumph Performance. We do high performance wiring on motorsports applications, racing applications, all that fun stuff. There you go. There you go. 
And right now we're setting up the PDMs, trying to program the Terminator X Max ECU, trying to fire this thing up, make sure I know what I'm doing. Yep. Hopefully we only let the smoke out of the tires and yeah, not the wires. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just doing the basic uh, tuning of the Holly Terminator X Max system. So I'm basically just telling it what transmission, telling them the engine displacement, the cylinders, the gasoline type, the type of wideband O2 sensor, uh, telling it how long to prime the fuel pump for, telling it how much pressure it has uh, or it's rated for, telling it what injectors it has. Um, and just setting up the trans and a couple other things to where hopefully you know we save this load it in there and then we can fire it up so i'm just giving it like a base thing just so it can know what it is so we can possibly fire it and get it to idle then we can check all the systems fluid everything like that make sure the oil and the the trans fluid, everything's topped off where it should be, and then get it running enough to get it on a trailer, and then get it over to Eddie so he can dyno it. So another cool part, if you notice in here, it's got these dual MoTeC PDM30s with all these big bunches of wires coming out of them. So basically, the MoTeCs control pretty much every function, you know, like basically these are your light switch and your fan switches and all that stuff. So there's a, we have an eight, eight switch uh, keypad that goes in the center console. And then right there, there's another 15 keypad that goes like on the dash right about here. I'll show you the dash on the bench in a little bit, but uh, that basically controls everything. So off of that eight, we have ignition and start and fans and a bunch of stuff like that. And then off this eight one, we have, uh, Porn and just kind of some other stuff that you won't use as much. Um, but it's a nice way to manage all your systems and everything. And it's, you know, super nice high-end parts. Um, so it's pretty much what we do in every build now is, is all MoTeC PDMs and just do everything the right way. And you can program these things to do whatever you want. You know, you can even program a sequence of buttons you need to hit before it'll even allow you to, you know, turn the ignition on. So if you have like a safety feature there but uh yeah so there's a main plug which is right here for the center console so those are all the outputs for the center console so the console and the dash are on a one big main plug and then you can just take the whole thing out in one piece and another cool thing notice shifter that's not bolted in <laughs> is a b &M ratchet style shifter we're running so it has like a neutral lockout reverse lockout it's pretty cool so uh we're making our own side plates for this that'll match the handbrake so just something a little different you know every pre-runner you see has the same same clunky shifter in it so we're trying something a little different a little nicer i think so uh that'll be pretty cool but yeah i'll show you the dash on the table over here all right, so here we have the uh, center console for the chrome truck. You know, it's got a Rockford Fosgate little stereo controller here. Uh, it's got our MoTeC 8-switch keypad right here. It's got the push-to-talks for the PCI radio. And then it's got the latest Trax Plus uh, PCI intercom. And then the newest, biggest, baddest uh, Kenwood race radio. So these are linked to each other. So basically the intercom is just so you can talk to each other in the car. And then race radio linked to this allows you to talk out to other people, which is what you set the push to talk for. So obviously you don't need to push that to talk to each other. That's just to talk out. And then in, uh, in the past, you probably noticed, you know, a bunch of trucks, they have the headset cables just zip tied through the truck. So on this one, we did flush mounts. So this will be the driver passenger uh, headset jacks. So you just plug your headset into that and then put your headset on. And then this is for the rear seats. So this is uh, driver side rear, passenger side rear, and this is for whoever's sitting in the middle. So just nice and clean to be able to plug into there, put the headsets on. There's plenty of length on the headset leads to where those will all work. Um, 
Let's figure that was cleaner than routing a bunch of cables throughout the whole inter interior. And then we also have a battery selector here. So we got one, two, one and two are off. So that'll be nice right there. Easy to get to for pretty much everyone in the truck, just in case you're in a scenario where you need to shut that off, which hopefully you never get into. And then, uh, yeah, the only thing we need to add here is the uh, AC controls, which aren't done yet. So that'll control the resto mod air system that's in that truck. Probably end up putting it in this area, and that'll just have a couple knobs for the air conditioning and heater controls. But uh, that's pretty much it for the console. Well, I guess the uh, shifter point through here, and then the lever for the neutral lockout is right, goes through this slot. And then a uh, handbrake, of course, can't have a truck here without a handbrake, so handbrake slot right there. And then uh, I will show you, I'll go grab the dash right now. There you go, there's the dash. Let's see if I can see what's going on here. So yeah, this just showed up yesterday. We got a 12 inch GPS over here. Um, so that'll be nice. We're actually hooking up front and rear facing cameras in that truck. So you'll be able to link those cameras into your GPSs as well. And the, even the Rockford Fosgate has a input for a camera. So you'll be able to do front and rear cameras on all the screens in the dash and console. And obviously, you know, if you're pre-running, you want a GPS and then we figured we had all this room, we do a second one. So we got a seven inch on this side. These are the HDS models, super nice GPS, super nice, you know, low profile, they don't stick out a bunch. And then we got the 15 switch keypad here from Motec. This will have a ignition and start and then all the fans and everything else on here. And then uh, something a little different. Usually we go with like a digital display like this. But if you can see this space right here, not really enough room to get that in there or anywhere unless we put it where the GPS was over there. So we decided to go with uh, analog style gauges, which are still digital. So they still plug in the same way this one plugs in. And they all just link to each other through CAN bus system. So it's not like running a, you know, ascending unit off of each gauge to each part. These plug right into the Holly EFI, and then you get an old school look with some new school technology. So I thought we'd do that, do something a little different. The white face will look nice because the truck will be like a mostly white with some blue and gold in the paint. Um, and then just some billet AC vents here. And then on the top, some def defroster vents there on the top. And of course, anodize those gold. But uh, yeah, this is just the, uh, Fiberworks uh, fiberglass uh, dash. I think they call it the flagship dash. So uh, nice platform to go off of. You know, we don't have to spend a month building a custom dash in it, but uh, just worked out good for this project. And uh, yeah, we should have this in there today and hopefully start lighting all these things up. Another cool new thing came up with, bringing back Pogs, uh, steering wheel center cap. So usually, you know, you get a steering wheel, it's got a little pop-in plastic ugly cap that goes there. So I came up with this, I had a steering wheel sitting on my desk next to a uniball cap that we make for our uniball upper arms. And I was like, oh, I'll just make that a little bigger and then we'll put it on the steering wheels. So, just like that. So you take out three bolts and we supply it with the three longer bolts and then you just take those bolts out, bolt this in and you're good to go. Matches your handbrake, will match your gas pedal that we make. So just another cool little, cool little product you came up with just to, just because. <laughs> Key, I like it, Picasso. All right, some big uh, Land Rover Defender 90 updates, or D90 updates. First thing you notice, obviously, is that big old eight in the one up there with the Whipple charger. So uh, the owner really wanted an eight in the one. He wanted that sound. So we figured this was the best way to execute that is come up over the top and down the back. And then uh, we ended up cutting the whole floor out of the 
underneath the driver passenger seats anyway. So we built an extra tall trans tunnel to where we'll where we ran the uh, three and a half inch tube through. But uh, we did a rotary firing order. So the, the firing order of the engine actually fires in a circle in that eight to one collector. So uh, I'm told that's not needed when you're having a in a boost application, but I figure we're doing it. We might as well do the rotary fire. So uh, this is just a mock-up block. Maruzzi's building a 418 uh, dry sump. 418, yeah, did I already say that? 418 dry sump LS3 stroker. So it'll be about a thousand horsepower. So it'll be uh, it'll be a handful. But uh, some other cool stuff you see in there. We uh, did some one-off billet motor mounts. So it's got billet motor mounts. And it's got a billet trans mount that I'll show you later. Um, up front, we got a big radiator in it now. So a 19 by 31 radiator from uh, Clint at CBR. So the, I think the one that originally was in it had no shroud, it had one small fan that was zip tied to the face of it. And the pulley on the water pump was rubbing the fan. So the motor, when it showed up, was probably up here. So we pushed the motor back quite a bit. Um, yeah, it was pretty bad. Like once we started digging into this thing and we just, it kept snowballing into more and more because the more we took apart, the more problems and uh, just flat out shitty work we found. <laughs> so just kind of been starting over with everything. Um, yeah, the radiator mount up here acts as a, you know, it mounts to the fenders here. So it actually, the fenders will bolt to this and that actually keeps the spread on the fenders, right? So the radiator worked out to where it's the exact same measurement as the inside of this fender from side to side. So the fender mount and radiator mount is all integrated into one. So that just simplifies things up here. We're gonna remake this panel here as well with the hood latches in it. We're gonna do a pretty much a flat panel that'll close in this whole top area so you won't see much. And we're gonna probably end up making a new grill for it too because it's like F-150 with the chain link fence in it look just doesn't look that good. So we're gonna change that, get rid of these cheap uh, LED lights, put some, put some nice lights in it as well. Um, also, obviously you can tell we cut out the firewall, so that's all gone. That was all junk, a bunch of Swiss cheese with a bunch of holes in it. The old trans tunnel was duct tape under the carpet. So it was literally duct taped across a bunch of layers. You took the carpet off and just punched your hand right through it. So it's crazy things people sell for 150 grand <laughs> with a duct tape center console. Um, you can see here in between the fender and the cab, we actually have a little extension here. We made, we pushed the front end forward six inches. So just to help us with packaging a 35 inch tire in here. And this does have a body kit on it. That's I think bolted in like some sort of epoxy in here to attach it to the stock fender. So we're actually gonna cut the body kit down the middle. And then we're actually gonna bring this rear section back about three or four inches. And then that'll allow the perfect opening for a 35 without having to cut out a bunch of this fender. So we're actually gonna make this fender opening bigger towards the back, which will hide how we added six inches here. So it'll hide some of that, and then it'll give us a wheel opening that we can use. And uh, probably end up doing something similar in the rear. We're gonna take that fiberglass over fender and cut it and extend it to get room for the 35 to stuff up in there. So here you can see the exhaust kicking out right here through the side panel. So we, uh, we built two, two tail sections of the exhaust. One has a little muffler and one's just a straight pipe. But uh, I don't think you're gonna get much sound difference between the two, so we'll see. But uh, if you look up in here, it's got a big old King uh, 3.0 by 10 IBP with the clevis style end with our billet trailing arms, uh, 2.0 bump stop in here. Got some inner fenders we're making right now. So we cut out the rear uh, wheel wells in the cab. We're making new ones so we can get the rear seats fit in here and so we can fit it around our shock mounts. So uh, we ended up, you know, before we just had a little panel around the shock and we ended up cutting it all out and just redoing the whole thing. And a lot of this uh, cab's actually aluminum, so that's why all this is aluminum. So we're gonna weld this back into the OEM sheet metal. It's coming along good. And if you look under there, it's kind of hard to get under there, but there's a big, massive billet. Uh, trans cross member that bolts into the, the transfer case mount. So it's a one piece billet from, from side to side. So it's actually like a structural member of the chassis as well as holding the transmission. 
So uh, I really wanted to do billet engine and trans mounts on this, so I think we executed that pretty good. And obviously we ended up adding a cage to this thing. So we got a bunch of points that come through and the cage actually bolts on the inside of the cab and then it bolts through to here, four bolts per plate. We'll add some gussets on this after we finish the rear mounted transmission cooler. But uh, this is just to get the main point of the cage tied in and then this one we tied into the shock mount bolt as well. Uh, most of this is just root pass. So when we pull the cab off, we'll go back through and we'll double pass everything on those. But uh, yeah, we got kind of carried away with the cage. We kept building it. I wanted to do it simple and then simple just didn't feel like it was enough to me, especially with, you know, being a thousand horsepower with a 90 something inch wheelbase. So uh, yeah, we got pretty carried away with the cage. Pretty, pretty triangulated, super safe up front. The, whoever gets in the back is gonna have to climb through the back door to get in or tilt the seat forward and climb over the X or something. But uh, we also tied, made the seat mounts or tied into the cage also. So you're actually mounted to the cage as well. It'll have uh, four or five point harnesses in it. Um, we did some pockets in the back to get access to the rear coilover bolt. Um, we'll do some access panels up front too, because we're gonna have to add some tabs on the, uh, the eight to one collector just to hold hold it together. So it'll be a tab here and a tab here, and it'll have a couple bolts around that to hold that together. And that's just the mock-up transmission. We're doing a reed case 4L80 uh, for maximum off-road transmissions. Um, we're gonna do probably access panel here. I'm gonna do a couple on the side. This thing will be pretty safe. And I'm thinking we're gonna do like a billet steel weld-in corner gusset. That'll also be like a handle to get in and out. So it'll be a corner gusset for this joint and it'll be a, you know, a handle to get in. So I think that'll be pretty cool and it'll follow the theme with all the billet everywhere. It's coming out pretty good. And our new guy, Miles, is in there welding away on the aluminum, making some pretty good progress here pretty quick. All right, over here we got a Gen 2 Raptor build. It's not your ordinary Raptor. It's got a little something different under the hood. But uh, back here, there's not much going on right now. Obviously you see the billet short course triangulated four link, big frame notch, some frame uh, bracing, a bunch of frame plating, covering up all the Swiss cheese, the holes that's everywhere. This back plate that we did. All the rest of the parts are at powder coat right now. So we'll show you more on this when we get that back. But uh, it has 45 gallon fuel cell back here with a sway bar, curry uh, fabricated rear end, Tube Works 10 inch billet third member, billet triangulated four link, uh, 3018 King IBP coilover for the rear shock and then also a 2.5 bump stop. Uh, bolt in bed cage that stays below the bed line. So uh, yeah, pretty much like 21 inches of travel, metal to metal with uh, a bunch of added rear weight that we need. Uh, a bunch of track width, bigger tires, um, so yeah, this thing is uh, pretty wild. Uh, it puts about 1,017 horsepower to the ground, which at the rear tires is insane. So it's got a Junkyard 5.0 Coyote with a twin turbo. So we'll cut to a video of me doing a burnout in it. <laughs> That wraps it up for this week. Don't forget, like, subscribe, uh, tell your buddies. Go to our website, check out our parts. But uh, yeah, looking forward to next week.